Okay, um, welcome and thank you for attending. You are here at the Community Board Transportation, Community Board 3 Transportation Meeting for June. This meeting is being recorded. Please sign into the chat uh, with your name and affiliation and if you'd like to speak on a specific um, item. The chat is only for technical issues and for attendance. Um, when uh, the chair will announce when each agenda item is up for comment from the public, please raise your Zoom hand. If you have trouble doing that, just chat me. Uh, the chair will recognize speakers with a two uh, minute time limit. Please, if you're representing a group, choose two folks to represent your point of view. Um, and uh, the chair will note if there are other people in attendance supporting or opposing the agenda item. Please keep yourself muted um, unless you've been recognized. I will be muting people if you unmute yourself out of turn. Um, thank you. Uh, Paul, I can do the minute. I can do the, the attendance. All right, give me one. Uh, sure. Um, be before we go into that, uh, good, uh, good. Once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Manhattan Community Board the Three's Transportation, Public Safety, Environment Committee meeting for the month of June, eighth, uh, twenty twenty one. Um, we're gonna, for some of you who may have been here for the joint committee item, um, the text amendment that is no longer on the agenda for this month that will be moved for next month, um, that joint committee item was between transportation, SLA, and I believe land use. That will be most likely moved to next month, July. That being said, we'll start with the first item on the agenda, which is the approval of minutes. Uh, does anybody have any objections to the minutes from last month? All right, going once, twice, three times sold, all right. Um, that being said, we can go ahead with the attendance. Thank you, Michelle, for doing it. Okay. And Paul, just sorry, we struck the joint item, right? Yes, the item has been struck from the agenda. Okay. We will, will most likely put it on for July. Okay. Okay. Paul Rangel. Yes. Present. Michelle Cooper Smith. Present. Wendy Lee. It's not here. Lee Berman. Present. Thank you, David Crane. Present. Um, is Felicia still in the committee, Paul? No. Okay. Ellen Liu. Present. Tariq Ramos. Of what we have as more committee members, the full breadth of what we have to offer. Mark I think that's present. So I know that that Thank you. present is a really Thank you, Tariq. Gotcha. Here's the last one, right? Yep, we're good. All right. Um, so the the first item we are going to look at tonight is a presentation from DOT in regards to the M14 Select Bus Service and the Busway Program. Um, who is presenting? Is it Armando or uh, yeah, it'll be Armando. Kimberly? Armando. Okay. Hi. All right. Great. So Armando, um, I, do we do you need to share your screen for the uh, presentation? Yes, can you give me one minute? Sure. While he's getting that set up, I can just do a quick intro. Um, sure, thank you. Sure, we're happy to be here tonight to give you guys an update um, on potential bus service improvements or bus priority improvements along the M14 A and D branches on Avenue A and D and some other streets in the neighborhood. Um, this is building on our, our conversations in 2019 around um, the launch of SBS and the 14th Street Busway. Um, so it's follow-up conversations to what we were, um, our plans from that time and with some potential improvements along those streets in the Lower East Side and the East Village. Um, it's a very different context than 14th Street, um, and very challenging, but we have some ideas about how to um, move forward with some bus priority. All right, thank you, Kimberly. Um, Armando, whenever you're ready, you can go right ahead and suffer that. Thank you. Also, just to note that um, we're joined by New York City Transit here tonight as well. So. Uh, just I didn't do my introduction, but I'm from the Manhattan Borough Commissioner's Office. We have Armando and Aaron from our, our transit development team, and then we have some folks from New York City Transit. 
Um, could, from New York City Transit, could you introduce yourself as well, please? Sure, my name is Kate Contino. I'm from MTA's Office of Government Community Relations. Hi, I'm Patrick Doherty from MTA New York City Transit Bus Planning. I'm Marcus Fork from New York City Transit Government Community Relations. All right, thank you. Um, Armando, what, uh, are you ready? Uh, yeah, uh, do you mind enabling us, uh, concern? Oh. Give me one second. Go ahead. You should be able to. Well, the way he does that, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining tonight. I'm Armando Pigman uh, with the with uh, New York City um, Department of Transportation. Uh, tonight, we'll be talking to to you about our project on the 14 A and D bus priority project in the Lower East Side and East Village of Manhattan. Uh, today we'll be talking about the background behind uh, not only the uh, M14 A and D itself, um, but uh, some of the 14th Street busway and 14th Street projects we've been working on. We'll talk about the project itself, of course, and the next steps that we anticipate uh, doing for this project. Uh, so some background. Um, as part of the Better Buses Action Plan in 2019, uh, the M14 A and D corridor um, the brand, the Avenue A and D branches, the M14 and D corridor were uh, identified as a priority location for improvement. Uh, this is different than uh, last year's uh, Better Buses Restart program, um, and uh, this is you know really right on the coattails of uh, the success that we had on the 14th Street Busway. Um, during the 14th Street Busway planning, we had committed to addressing bus priority issues on the A and D branches, and just last month. Uh, during Streets Week, Mayor de Blasio announced plans to add bus lanes to uh, the A and D branches of this corridor. Uh, a little bit about the better, what a little bit more about what the Better Buses Action Plan is. Uh, the intention is to improve bus speeds by 25%. Um, it also calls for installing 10 to 15 miles of new bus lanes per year, improving five miles of existing bus lanes per year, and generally supporting the MTA. Um, supporting the MTA and their bus network redesign efforts. Uh, so now, uh, next a little bit about the corridor, the M14 A and D uh, travels on 14th Street, Avenue A, Essex Street, and Green Street for the M14 A, and the M14 D also travels on Avenue D and Columbia Street, um, and uh, Avenue C, but we're not going to be uh, impacting Avenue C here. Uh, the A branch is two miles long, uh, as well as the D branch, um, and this corridor is very important because it provides critical critical connections to the subway uh, between the Lower East Side and the East Village and the rest of uh, and the rest of the city. As we know, um, there are there isn't a whole lot of subway in this in this area of the city, um, so it's a really important service. Uh, M14 A and D serves approximately 32,000 uh, customers daily, um, and of those 32,000 customers, 5,800 of them board on the A branch, and 8,700 of them board on the D branch. Uh, some more background on the 14th Street busway and the bus lanes. Uh, the M14. Oh, I'm sorry. I think uh, I'm actually supposed to turn this over to our colleagues at uh, MTA uh, for this in the next slide. Yeah, thanks, Armando. I can kick it up from here for a couple of slides. <clears throat> um, so most of, you, most of you are probably familiar with this, but the M14 Select Bus Service, or SBS, launched in July 2019. Um, and then a few months later, in October 2019, the busway on 14th Street between approximately 3rd Ave to 9th Ave was installed. Um, that also included regular offset bus lanes uh, between 1st and 3rd Avenue. Um, so, you know, with these improve with these um, installations, we saw pretty significant improvements um, across the corridor for both the M14 
A and the M14D. Um, you know, subsequently in July of 2020, the bus lanes were actually extended from First Avenue to Avenue C. Um, and sorry, looking at this last point here, it also included um, bus lane cameras to help enforce all of these bus lanes along the corridor. Um, so now we can get into the improvements that we saw resulting from, from this project. Um, and actually, so the improvements were, were quite significant along you know, the entire route, but specifically on 14th Street, where we saw um, you know, ridership increase 24%, or which is equivalent to you know, nearly 6,000 riders. Um, and this was due to customers responding to the improvements. Bus travel times along 14th Street between 3rd Ave and 8th Ave, where the busway was installed, improved by 36%. Um, additionally, the customer journey time performance increased to 85%, which is well above our system-wide average of 70%. And what that is measuring is kind of the reliability of the bus service, um, the additional time a customer spends at a bus stop or on the bus. Um, so 85% is was a huge improvement, especially along the M14A and D, which was one of the, the slowest routes, slowest and most unreliable routes um, in the entire city, actually. And then, you know, the last point I want to highlight is looking at the travel times along the Avenue A and Avenue D branches only. Um, we, we saw improvements there as well, where there was no bus lane or, or busway um, installation. Um, the improvements there were awkward fare collection and better stop spacing. And we saw improvements of up to 17% per, um, depending on the route variant and the direction. So they, they varied from one to 17%, but as you can see in the chart, you know, depending on, again, the route and direction, um, it goes up to 17%, uh, which, which is quite significant. Thanks, Pat. Uh, so now we need to talk about the need for additional uh, M14 A and D improvements. Um, you know, we obviously the effort that MTA uh, put into trying to improve speeds with off-board fare payment, off-board fare payment, and uh, better bus stop spacing uh, really, you know, paid off in its own regard. Um, but we're still looking at speeds that hover between 4.4 and 6.7 miles per hour on the branches. Um, generally, we saw that speeds are slower during the PM peak than the AM peak, and that westbound speeds are slower than the AM than westbound speeds are, are slower than the eastbound speeds. Um, but I think wh what's really important on the slide that I want to highlight to you all is that speeds on the bus stay slow throughout the day. Um, so the speeds we're looking at are, you know, only a little bit better than walking. Well, you know, they're not, you know, exactly walking speeds, but uh, they're not particularly fast either. Uh, and these, again, you know, while uh, you might typically expect, you know, on any given corridor, the buses get faster during the midday or overnight when there's less traffic, um, that's not really the case on the Lower East Side and the East Village. And that, you know, has a lot to do with uh, local traffic patterns, local transportation use being uh, much different than you, would, than you would see elsewhere in the city. Um, but we'll, we'll circle back to that point later. So going on to the proposed project, uh, some of the um, tools in our toolkit to improve bus service include curbside bus lanes, uh, meaning the bus is adjacent to the curb, offset bus lanes, meaning that the bus lane is one lane off from the curb, turn bays, and better curb management. Uh, getting into what the, some of the implications of these are, uh, bus lanes increase speed and reliability of the bus service, of course. Um, the difference between curbside bus lanes and offset bus lanes is that offset bus lanes are ideally used when the corridor is wide enough to accommodate a parking lane, a travel lane, and a bus lane. However, a curbside lane is used when the roadway is not wide enough to accommodate all of that. 
uh, and instead the bus lane is put on the curbside and curb access is provided during the off-peak for parking and loading. Uh, both of these kinds of bus lanes can be enforced by unbus cameras on this corridor. Uh, turn bays help uh, manage traffic queues by improving uh, flow for buses and general traffic. Uh, updated curb regulations uh, such as commercial loading help reduce double parking, which helps all traffic, including buses. Uh, and then one more toolkit, one more tool in our toolkit that we wanted to bring up is transit signal priority, um, which gives buses additional green time when they approach intersections. Um, however, we have actually already implemented this on the A and D branches on the M14 A and D, so it's not something that we expect to be using extent to be adding extensively beyond what we've already done for this project. There will be a few places here and there where we might make some tweaks, but it will not be a core part of this project that we are um, currently undertaking. Uh, so going on to the overview of the proposed improvements. Um, and, and don't worry if you don't get all this down, we'll be looking at this more um, in detail for each of these sections in the next few slides. Um, first up, we have a southbound uh, Avenue A curbside lane uh, between 6th Street and Houston Street. Uh, we have a variety of turn bays being installed on Essex Street, uh, as well as an offset bus lane being insta installed on part of Essex Street and a short little curbside lane there. Um, moving further down the M14A, uh, at the beginning of the route on Jackson Street, uh, we'll have a short curbside bus lane, um, which I will get into the details of why that's important later. And then on Avenue D, uh, we're looking at a northbound curbside bus lane between Houston Street and 9th Street, as well as a shorter southbound lane between 6th Street and 4th Street. And then uh, various commercial loading um, definitely between 4th and Houston Street, but we've also, we will also be having more discussions about additional loading zones along Avenue D to help alleviate that uh, track that we really witnessed from um, all that loading that's occurring for businesses along Avenue D. Uh, and last but not least, we'll also be looking at an offset bus lane on Columbia Street uh, on the northernmost section of Columbia uh, between what would be Stanton Street and Houston Street. Uh, so going into more detail on these designs, uh, we're first going to look at the southbound Avenue A curbside bus lane. Uh, again, Avenue A is one of those corridors that's insufficiently, insufficiently wide to be able to accommodate uh, offset bus lanes, so we have to implement a curbside lane. Um, the uh, this will be a shared bike and bus lane to uh, accommodate both uh, existing bike traffic as well as helping to prioritize buses. Um, this is a design that uh, we feel is uh, safe uh, and that you know we've spoken to lots of um, lots of uh, valuable team members within DOT to make sure that this design uh, works for everyone. Um, so this is the solution we came up with. Uh, the proposed bus lane hours will be 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's every day, um, so, uh, you know, seven days a week. Uh, this will convert 33 daytime parking spots um, along the corridor, uh, but it will return to being parking during the evening. Uh, we will be looking at, we will be looking to see what we can do to try to accommodate a displaced metered parking along Avenue A um, to make sure that um, the benefits of the parking turnover that you get with metered parking are still seen. Uh, we're also reviewing additional uh, loading opportunities on the side streets um, and overnight parking will be maintained. Um, yeah, that's it for Avenue A. Essex Street, uh, we're going to look at this in two portions. Uh, between Stanton Street and Houston Street, we're looking at two left-hand turn bays. Uh, this will help alleviate uh, a lot of the traffic queuing that we see going on to Houston Street, as well as you know some of the traffic queuing we see going on to Stanton Street, uh, and help traffic move um, move easier. Further south on Essex Street, between Delancey and um, sorry. Uh, Delancey and uh, Sand Street will be having an offset bus lane. 
uh, as well as a single right-hand turn bay. Again, the right-hand turn bay helps alleviate uh, through traffic and the offset bus lane allows us to preserve parking. Um, Essex Street, unlike Avenue A, is actually wide enough to be able to accommodate off an offset bus lane, which is really fantastic. Um, this bus lane will be in effect at all times, uh, uh, every day of the week. Um, we are also going to be working on a new paint on a painted curb extension at Delancey Street. Um, technically, that's already kind of there, but it, it definitely needs some improvement and we'll be uh, helping to shore that up. Um, as far as parking loss on this corridor, uh, we actually only lose eight parking um, spaces and that's those are being converted for the right hand turn bay. Moving on to Avenue D, uh, we have a lot of different pieces uh, with Avenue D. Um, again, Avenue D, like Avenue A, is not wide enough to accommodate any offset lanes. Uh, so on Avenue D, we're proposing a northbound curbside bus lane. Um, this bus lane is in effect from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Uh, southbound, uh, there will be another uh, curbside bus lane between 6th Street and 4th Street, uh, same hours. Uh, and then again, we're looking at new commercial loading between 4th Street and Houston Street uh, on the west side of Avenue D. Um, we, do, we do not have hours yet for that, um, but we again, we really hope that the commercial loading here alleviates a lot of that uh, double parking and dangerous maneuvers that you see people doing around the vehicles at this portion of Avenue D. Um, this converts 65 daytime uh, parking spaces um, and, and the loading converts uh, 28 daytime parking spaces. Overnight parking, uh, again, will be maintained. Uh, Columbia Street, uh, so what we're looking at is uh, approaching Houston Street, Houston Street to having northbound offset bus lane. Uh, the offset, this is a particularly congested area of Columbia Street, so this bus lane is really important to help buses get to the, to the front and the traffic queue to make sure they can uh, get that green light to move across the street to Avenue D. Um, again, Columbia Street is wide enough to be able to accommodate an offset lane, which is great. Uh, so there's no parking loss here. And this lane is in effect at all times every day. And finally, in Jackson Street, um, Jackson Street is a really important place for the M14A because this is where uh, it makes a left a left hand turn uh, onto Grant Street to begin its route. Um, right now, Jackson Street is a very congested area. Um, with parking on both sides, uh, leaving little leaving a uh, little room for buses and vehicles to be able to maneuver. Um, in addition, because of all the parking congestion, this means that the bus is often far back in the queue. So um, as we know, uh, Jackson Street doesn't get a very long green time. And when it does get a green time, the entire traffic queue doesn't have a chance to clear out. Um, so oftentimes what we'll find is the bus will get stuck in the back of the queue, the light will turn green, and then it'll turn red before it even gets out of the block. What this bus lane does is it allows the bus to go all the way to the front of the queue. That way it always catches the green light every time. And we think that getting the 14A running uh, right after the first stop in the corridor is uh, really crucial to keeping it on time and reliable. Um, this, uh, convert, this will convert 16 uh, parking spaces um, for the bus lane and the bus lane hours are in effect at all times every day. So next steps, uh, we need to complete the corridor traffic analysis, um, finalize the bus lane design and the curb management plan, uh, conduct additional community outreach, and then we'll be looking at implementation sometime uh, in late uh, summer and fall of 2021. Um, while I'm here, I just wanted to go back and highlight a few points. Uh, the reason why the hours and a lot of these quarters are the way they are is, again, because um, the uh, what we've seen with the speeds in the 14 A and D is that they are slow consistently throughout the day and not just rush hour, which is why um, we're, look, we're really looking at these hours. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we can open up to questions now. All right, thank you, Armando. Um, 
So at this point, I will take questions from the committee. Um, you raise your hands and I will call on you. And the first hand I saw was David Crane, followed by Lee Burn. David, go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, this is big. Um, based on the what we really perceive it as the lack of bus service caused by turning into an SBS below 14th Street. Um, I don't know. There was one slide that I couldn't quite grok it by the time you left it that did talk about. I'd be interested in looking back at that. But here, here's what I want to say. I am surprised this is so big because our agenda could only say, what was the exact words of it? Uh, DOT, blah, blah, SBS service proposal. Um, the community had no idea that this was coming. And so they are not here. And this is a problem that happens basically every time that DOT brings a big proposal to us. Um, and you know, so before I go any further, let me say that I, I am probably not going to oppose this. I'm probably going to be a fan of it, but I am not a fan of the way the DOT does not inform us what is coming down the pike before the meeting. So we can post it on the website on our agenda. I'll probably have more to say later. Thank you. Sure, so just in response to that, we did share a meeting notice flyer that includes elements of the project, including bus lanes and other items in the streets that they would be on. We shared that with the community board in advance of the meeting and shared it with all the elected officials as well. Okay, so I feel bad. Um, I used to chair this committee and uh, um, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm remembering things from before, but uh, I do think that, that we then the community board should be posting a more uh, comprehensive description where we will say at least outlining the area. Um, you know, and it, can we end up with uh, agenda items that may be a hundred words? That's fine. I'm sorry if I blasted you guys. It's okay, understandable. Thank you, David. Go ahead, Lee Berman. Well, one, I'd, I'd like to echo um, some of what David just mentioned. Um, you know, I, I reached out to, uh, to Paul yesterday asking for more information um, about this presentation. And, and he said, well, they haven't given us anything yet. And to what David said, you know, this, this is a, a massive undertaking. It's a massive plan. Most of it looks really good. And in that it will uh, certainly uh, speed up uh, bus service, which is what uh, our goal is, but it will also impact a very large portion of the community, both those that take the buses as well as pedestrians and drivers, and without knowing in advance how massive this proposal was or what it entailed, most of our community isn't here. Um, so that's point number one. Uh, point number two is, is your Jackson Street um, northbound curbside bus lane. I, I understand your proposal for that, that you're, you guys are saying that the buses get hung up when they go to make their left turn onto Grand Street. Um, I don't know that this is actually going to improve matters, the, the situation, because what you're not taking into account is as soon as you make the left onto Grand Street, buses and other traffic is stalled because of the horrendous on-ramp to the Williamsburg Bridge traffic. And so your buses certainly during the afternoon and evening are still still going to wind up getting stuck in traffic because of the other parts that, that interplay um, traffic-wise into the community. Committee, any other questions, comments? Paul, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, Thanks for presenting. I'm excited about more accessibility for the buses. I would ask for more buses um, also, if that's a possibility. I was trying to get home on Saturday night and I had to sprint to the M14A, so it really felt like things were back to normal, i.e. no buses. Um, but um, I just have a question about, um, is this going to impact uh, any of like the open restaurant structures that are currently out there? Um, I'm just wondering if you have 
looked into that. And do you want me to take that or do you want to do that? Sorry, I was muted. Um, the big, I'll let Armando speak to the details on this one. And the big picture is that um, we're still working through a lot of the conflicts with all of our um, bike and bus and pedestrian projects and how they interact with open restaurants. I think in this case, um, we're fairly fortunate that um, there aren't so many conflicts, but Armando, you can speak to the people. Right, so the details are that this project, at the moment, uh, we actually don't see any conflicts between our plan improvements and open restaurants in the area. Okay, thanks. And um, what's the timeline on this? Do you know? Uh, we're looking at implementation either in summer or fall of 2021. Okay, thank you. David, you have your hand up. Right, so there are no, uh, what's a better word for them? Whatever, the sidewalk shacks. There are no sidewalk shacks that will be eliminated by this or displaced? No, that's correct. Okay, thanks. Meaning the roadway seating, right? What was uh, that? What kind of seating? The roadway seating is what you were referring to, right? Uh, yes, correct. Just missing, not All right. Um, just a uh, in, in terms of the bus cameras, how? What's the question I'm looking for? How good is the enforcement um, when there's cars in the bus lanes, anything like that, that's slowing down the bus times and their bus speeds? Um, how often are the cars ticketed or anything else that's in the bus lane? How's, um, how's that been working? And you mean for the on bus cameras or yeah. both? Both, uh, whatever uh, enforcement has, uh, has happened with the bus lanes with any type of camera. So I, I, I can I can take that one, Armando. My, my name is Aaron Sugura. I'm with uh, DOT and our transit development group as well. Um, so we've the the program um, with the stationary cameras that DOT operates, uh, which is on 14th Street. Um, you know, it's while it's very effective at seeing what it does see, uh, it, the locations of it are relatively limited and. You know, it's more complicated to move them around. Uh, by contrast, the uh, program that the MTA operates that installs the cameras for enforcement on their buses, obviously much more nimble in terms of what they're able to see and issue violations against. Uh, that said, it is a much younger program and they have not rolled it out very widely. This, the M14, the M14 family of routes being some of the most important in the city got the the able cameras um, fairly early, or as one of the first routes in the program. Um, I, I will defer to some extent to to our colleagues at New York City Transit to speak more in more detail about them. But I just just emphasize that you know uh, the the process of issuing violations. Um, uh, it, it only can happen within a bus lane. So, you know, for example, uh, you know, there's, there's, we hear concerns a lot about um, bus stops that are blocked. Um, that is not something that currently under state legislation, the MTA or DOT has um, authority to enforce with cameras. So, you know, where we're able as part of this project and as part of the rest of the busway and the bus lanes on 14th Street to add bus lanes, anywhere in those spots, we can we can be enforcing against cars that are sitting there too long or 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 driving in the bus lane where they can't, where they're not they're not supposed to. Um, but uh, where there are other bad things that happen on the roadway that aren't literally in the bus lane, that's where we're a little bit limited. If anyone else from transit, if Kate or Marcus or anyone wants to talk more about ABLE, they're welcome to. Anybody in transit want to answer? Kate, I don't have any, hi. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I don't have any information on our, 
any data on on the able cameras and the uh, violations that have been issued, but it's certainly something we can get back to you on if you're looking for specific information about what we have done on 14th Street, we can get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. David Crank, go ahead. All right, I've, I've calmed down now. Um, could, we always try to present the, the, from the community perspective, the, the, the cost and the benefit of these, um, of these proposals when we write a resolution. I assume we're doing that tonight, right? Is that true, Paul? That we will be? I think we should capture. I don't, yeah. I don't know that we didn't discuss writing a resolution one way or another. This, we did not. Is DOT want to need a resolution? Sorry, I keep muting. Um, we would love to have support. Um, I do. I do hear you on the on the outreach, and I, and I I want to make sure that we are um, addressing that need and whether we can do as we've done other other projects where we um, you guys are able to write a support a letter of support or resolution, and then we're able to like work with you on additional outreach that might be an option. But I don't always like support. Okay, so it's a challenge to write these things in a way that's comprehensive so that the board can understand what they're being asked to vote on. So uh, it might be too difficult to do tonight. But anyway, I wanted to ask two questions about you know community cost and benefit. The first one would be, is there a total, I, I lost count of the number of parking spaces that would be lost. I like the way you were presenting them, you know, daytime only versus, you know, nighttime, um, you know, and per piece of the of the proposal. But what's the total number? Would we have to go through and total that up? It was well over 100. I think Perhaps. I remember the total was around 150, but that's not, um, that would be like daytime, right? Not not broken out okay. by what's returned in the evening. Okay. So if you have that. All right, we, we would want to be able to clearly state that in a whereas. Okay, that's helpful. Well, most for transparency. I mean, people that can weigh it in their minds, some people, you know, look at the cost and some of the benefit. Now for the benefit, do you have um, do you have an idea on how much this is going to improve it? You had a slide where you talked about improved travel times. It was early in the presentation. I would kind of like to see that slide again so we can kind of look at it. In my mind, the 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 the, the reduced travel time um, and even wait time. The reduced time it takes to, to use transportation is a benefit. And I would like to see how much we benefited by having lost all those stops when you turned it to an SBS. I mean, I, I'm no longer upset about that. That was so long ago and it does seem to be working. What was that? And do you have projections for what you would like, what you expect to see, you know, measures of success? What, what would those be for this? You would think, oh, we're gonna reduce travel time by this percentage or, you know, uh, that many minutes or something. Do you have that or could you? Wonderful for the benefit of this exercise, can you put that slide back up, please? It was about the last slide that, uh, that the New York City Transit was speaking to. I tried to see the, the number, but. Mark, is that what you're looking for? Kind of uh, like 38%, 17%. It. We don't see it yet, Armando. Um, it's the oh, one, it's the it's, transit slide. It's the second transit slide. Correct. There you go. Improved by 36 along between. So the second sub bullet talks about what I thought was going to be the biggest improvement, strictly putting in the 14th Street busway. I don't see anything uh, up to 17% along Avenue A and D branches. Okay, so then the last bullet is the improvements that you saw. Presumably that means after leaving 14th Street. Yeah, that's correct. So measures, you know, the A and D branches separately, um, not including 14th Street. Okay, I see this as good. You did the, I think if I'm remembering correctly, you did the 14th, the below 14th Street SBS changes before you put in the busway. Um, yeah, that, that went along with um, the SBS implementation in July 2019. And yeah, the busway came later in October 2019. So this is conflating those two improvements. Okay, well, that, seeing that slide made me feel much better about 
what happened because I don't know if you recall at the time, but I, I characterized it as uh, punishing the people of the Lower East Side to to get you know faster, you know, not even addressing the problem or something, whatever. It would be nice to see some projected improvements that you're hoping to get from putting in all of these uh, dedicated bus lanes. I don't know if you modeled it or something. So I, I think that's a difficult number to get to, but we, we did look at all of our bus lane only projects in 2018 and 2019. And on an average, they resulted in an improvement of 8.4%. So that, that excluded any you know, SPS or, or other priority improvements. They were you know, mostly focused on bus lanes. And Patrick, there was also a slide, the Better Buses plan also has a, uh, an objective percentage improvement overall for, for, for these projects, right? That was like one of the first slides. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, I'll let DOT speak to this. Okay. Yeah, and uh, you know maybe Kim and Aaron can say more, but the 25% is a citywide target. That's not to say that we're necessarily trying to specifically say like every route is improving 25%. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just hope that adds a little, some clarity. Right, well, their numbers, I don't know. I, I would love to see a projection. I understand that it's difficult to do. Thanks. Susan, go ahead. Um, thank you. The 17% um, improvement, how many minutes is that? Sorry, I can get you the exact number, but it's, but you know, somewhere, about? it's about, you know, two and a half minutes. So that's what I was getting at. So that's two and a half minutes, and that's between Say for, say for the Avenue A bus, that would be between 14th Street all the way down Avenue A, Essex and Grand. It would save two and a half minutes on that whole route. Susan, Correct. remember Susan, that that's, that was the phase one of these, these bus improvements. What we're, what we're looking to do is get better numbers um, with the addition of the bus links. So we're not stopping at that that improvement, that two and a half minutes. This is this is looking towards the future and improving it even further. Okay, and I'm not against it. Um, I'm just saying, to be honest, the improvement we've made so far, the two and a half minutes, which is you know most people aren't going to experience the two and a half minutes of experience because they're not on that whole road. So it'll be maybe a minute. So so far, I mean it's. That seventeen percent, I'm going to say, is basically nothing. It's it really doesn't make any difference. Well, keep in mind also that a lot of our customers are also traveling at least some distance on 14th Street. Union Square is the most popular destination. So, in addition, in addition to the time saved along the A or D branches, you're saving time along 14th Street. When you add that up, that that makes a big difference it, for and for a customer. Um, and I understand that, and I'm that person, and, and I'm that person that's always going to Union Square. But what I'm talking about, they're two totally separate, you know, they were done separately, um, the 14th Street and the, um, which is one improvement, and then the Avenue A and the Avenue D, um, which are very different. They're very different um, improvements in bus routes. So I... I just want to say that 17% sounds good, but it's really two and two and a half. And I personally so going to say uh, would say that you know uh, enforcing the bus stops would be a, a, a much bigger improvement. So just a, a point of of clarification on the timeline here. I we've all been through a lot over the last last year and a half and just want to remind everyone that New York City Transit and DOT had every intention of launching all of this stuff at once but we were we faced numerous uh numerous challenges in the, the state courts about the busway that delayed the busway by four months that makes this a much more complicated project to talk about and, and 
and and and and that so so it was it was always the intention that all of the improvements on 14th Street as well as uh, as well as the changes that 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 transit was was working on for, with the off board fare collection and the and the stop consolidation were all going to come on July first and then we were diverted off that plan and transit moved forward with their piece. I just want to want to when we when we intend to make these kinds of improvements, we try to do as much of it at once as possible so we can show the biggest bang, you know, for for people's buck all at once. And and we 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 had a very fraught history with this project. <laughs> I, I, understand, sort of right I, I understand that, but please understand that we're also just deal, you know, we're talking about the Avenue A and the Avenue D parks. Um, and we're talking about the improvements that were made there separately than the improvements that were made on 14th Street, um, which we didn't, I don't think anyone from here challenged any of the um, improvements on 14th Street. So I just wanna say on Avenue A, the change that we have is two and a half, approximately two and a half minutes. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I think your point is taken. I think we do like to do it all together, but I also understand that you're trying to piece out what, what the impact of the specific changes were. I think that makes sense as well. Um, I think one thing that gets lost in the speed sometimes is also the reliability improvements. And I think that matters as well to people who are riding, knowing that the bus will come when it's supposed to come. So I don't know if we have that data here, but it's not always about exactly how long it'll take us you know, there's other aspects as well. But I, under, I hear what you're saying, Susan. Okay, my, my one suggestion, um, what I think would be a, an incredible improvement is um, building in some kind of enforcement to keep the bus stops clear so the buses could get to the bus line, uh, to the curbs. Understood. Uh, David Crane, you have your hand up? I do, about um, that two and a half minutes. We did point out two years ago that losing the local bus stops was going to be a burden on, especially the elderly. You removed a bus stop in front of at least one Nork, the one that's around the block from me, around the corner. Um, and so when I walk, and I think I'm a typical New Yorker, I walk at one minute per block. Um, an older New Yorker, I mean, I'm relatively young, but an older New Yorker, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take them longer than a minute per block. So every block that you remove is more than a minute for them of additional travel time. And it's difficult, you've got a walker. I, th I think that you moved, uh, moved stops as much as three blocks away. Um, you know, so there's a minimum of three minutes of travel time, probably more like six or 10 minutes for an elderly person um, to get to that stop. Anyway, we did point that out that that's, um, you know, like I said, it's probably inevitable, but that really is the impact of that uh, on that person is pretty severe. Oh my gosh, I'm rambling. There was a question that I was going to put. Bus bunching. Have you noticed much bus bunching happening less often because that's a benefit? I, I don't see bus bunching on Avenue A. Yeah, and that kind of reflects the improved reliability. Um, we did show a data point um, showing that that customer journey time performance increased significantly to 85%, which is 15 points above the, the system wide average. Um, and that is that that metric does kind of reflect the reliability slash bus bunching. Um, so, so we have seen a huge improvement there on, on both the A and D lines. Okay. Um, committee, have any other questions? Okay. Um, I'm actually going to take a few questions from the community for the for DOT and transit. Um, so if you can put your hands up, I only see one hand up. We'll put two minutes on the clock. You'll have two minutes to ask your question or your statement, and we'll go from there. Uh, Mr. Wald, you have your two minutes. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, I'm glad that DOD and VMTA finally addressed 
Avenue A uh, bus service. Although I, I don't see any address for any any fix for the situation, 14th Street to 6th Street. Uh, can you explain why not? Right now, the whole southbound moving lane and the northbound moving lane are used as a loading zone all day, every day, uh, because the trucks, the delivery trucks, have nowhere to off to download the goods. I also see in your plan that south of 6th Street, the bus lane, the curbside bike bus lane will actually be a loading zone throughout the day because the trucks also will have nowhere to download. Also, uh, the unprotected bike lane south of 6th Street kind of was eliminated in the plan. If you can explain why, thank you. Can you just clarify on your when you're speaking about those particular street segments, which avenue you're talking about? So Avenue A, Avenue A south of 14th Street, between uh, 12th Street and 11th Street, for example, uh, the whole curb is metered parking. So people park their personal passenger cars, but the trucks have nowhere to operate. So the whole moving lane is unusable. Then the bus stop between 11th Street and 10th Street is used as a loading zone because there are that block specifically is the only block on Avenue A, which is alternate side parking for some reason. All of Avenue A is metered parking except for one block. Why is that? Um, I'll field some of those questions and um, if I miss anything, uh, remind me, I think. Um, Kim will be able to answer a lot of questions too. Uh, to start with, the reason why we place the um, bustling, where the extent of the bustling where it is on the Avenue A, uh, is that because there's like so much constraint in this corridor in this neighborhood that we were try really trying to um, place these bus lanes where we thought they would have the most impact. Uh, and from what our data shows is that the slowest part of Avenue A is southbound between Sixth Street and Houston Street. So we really made that priority to make sure that got bustling treatments. Um, uh, let's see, as far as uh, double parking um, and general truck loading go, uh, we, uh, as part of this plan, are looking at, um, you know, commercial loading zones and like where to place those, you know, commercial metered parking, uh, things like that. My understanding is that um, DOT is also undertaking an effort on a neighborhood loading zone pilot. Um, uh, uh, in, in the East Village, which includes much of Avenue A. Um, I think that this project is maybe not strictly the one that will answer the double uh, parking question, but we will try to address that as much as we can as part of this project, because obviously um, double parking, you know, affects the bus, it affects everyone in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, we will, um, you know, have, we will have, we'll do, you know, what we can within the context of this project to improve that as much as we can. Um, and I, I'm sure Kim will expand on that more. I mean, going to your last point about the bike lane, the bike lane is not disappearing. It's going to be a shared bus bike lane. Um, this is something that we've already done in, um, I think Elmhurst, the Elmhurst neighborhood on Broadway. Um, you know, it's worked for us and we've spoken with our bike team. Uh, and this was the solution that we all came to. Um, and we feel pretty confident that it, it's uh, very workable here. Uh, keep in mind that buses aren't exactly you know, um, uh, blowing or going to be blowing by here like 20 miles an hour. They're not they're going to be knocking cyclists off their seats. Um, at the same time, you know, it, it can also be dangerous to uh, be putting in a bike lane that squeezes them between a, a bus and jail and traffic. Um, so the shared lane was uh, what we concluded was going to be the safest option here for all users. Yeah, just to expand on that last point a little bit, I think keep in mind it's a little bit of a tricky design when you have a curbside lane that changes from a bus lane to parking and then to have the bike lane integrated with that under those different conditions. So the shared lane is, is an extra wide lane and it gives them kind of space to maneuver depending on what the bus is doing. Um, and it is a pretty new design, but um, we have seen it to be successful in Queens. So we're talking about here as well, we're proposing it. And um, we'll be looking forward to feedback from, from cyclists and, and 
others. Um, for the first point, just as I think Armando mentioned during the presentation, we're still working with our parking team to look at these corridors and, and, and you know, tweak the curb regulations. So thank you for pointing out those specific locations and we can um, bring them to their attention and talk through them with them. Uh, yeah, and thanks for bring, mentioning that about the width of the bustling, Kim. Our, um, I did not say in the presentation, but that shared bus, bus bike lane on Avenue A is actually 16 feet wide. Our standard bus lane, bus lanes are typically between 10 and 12 feet wide. So we really have the extra four feet there, uh, which gives um, room for buses and bikes to maneuver. Okay, thank you. Um, the next hand I see is Joseph Keschner. Saying that correctly? Hi, this is actually Tracy Rochek. I'm just speaking on Joseph Keschner's computer because he's my honey. So um, <laughs> um, three quick comments. And one was about the bike lane, uh, shared bike lane, bus lane. So uh, as a cyclist in the East Village, I, I'm not too happy about a shared bus bike lane, but I imagine that once you share this with the cyclist community, you'll hear enough about that. So I'll just let um, transportation alternatives and others, um, if you're sharing it with them, uh, speak about that. And the other two comments are one, um, uh, around, this is a bit of a, maybe a red, you know, coming from the left field, but I was wondering about more benches at the bus stops and also at intermittent stops um, post COVID because health is a critical issue in our communities. And also with, I've noticed with the um, express stops that there are, as I think the other gentleman was mentioning, the, the longer distance between them. Personally, I've just been noticing more people struggling, elderly, people with, you know, um, crutches, et cetera. And also people with long haul COVID in my community struggling to get down the down the blocks, you know, down the streets. And so um, I know that DOT, I think, is responsible for the benches in our in, in New York City, I believe. And so as while they wouldn't necessarily be, first of all, we need more benches at the bus stops, but also it would be great if we just had more benches in the city. And so if we could have them uh, distributed along the corridors of the bus um, corridors, that would be fantastic. And the last small comment is on the corner of um, 14 and Avenue C, where the, these long buses are making the rounds and we have the congestion of the Con Ed building, there is a construction site that has been uh, there without a permit, with a permit back and forth for the last 10 years and its construction goes out into the street and basically is pushing um, cyclists, pedestrians and into one another. And it's quite problematic. So um, I know that maybe Susan Steltzer could be involved in this, but also um, everybody needs to be aware of this. <laughs> and uh, there's near misses all the time right there because of the, again, the congestion and the construction point. So if, I don't know, if everyone here who's working on this can, can just be aware of that. And, Hopefully help fix it. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm aware of that 14th and C, what used to be RNS Strauss construction. Uh, they still haven't built anything there yet. Uh, Susan, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, it's not going to be popular. It's one of those very elderly people everyone's talking about. I, I don't think the the bus stop change really was that much of a burden. I mean, we fought and we got back a number of stops, and I don't think the result is is really that bad. I, I don't know if it was worth it, but I I don't I don't feel it's it's a it's a burden. I don't think anyone goes more than two or three blocks. Uh, well, stop. Somebody who has long haul, I personally can't make it to the next bus stop, so. I maybe you don't have to be old, but I've also also broken my broken my leg and my ankle, and I actually need more stops. So I'm not just talking about elderly people, but thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, 
this is for the committee. The committee can answer these questions for me. Um, do you want to see DOT come back next month and we potentially put a resolution together? Because we're not going to do this tonight. Um, maybe get some more community input. Paul, we're going to have that open restaurant text amendment next month. Oh, damn. Okay. And we're not going to be meeting in August, right? Well, that's up to you, but you could put together bullet points tonight and write it after the meeting. Okay. What do you think about basically, yeah, do that tonight, right after the meeting and vote on it next month? Could you can we do, do bullet it points briefly? and vote. You, you've yeah, often you done can. bullet points and voted. That is true. When it's something that's a little simpler and it's a straight okay. yes or no, but our bullet points would really be the argumentation. Anyway, I'm just asking, do we think in a short amount of time that we could actually move a draft motion that we bullet pointed tonight and then vote on it? Or is that too much? I don't know how much it's worth either. Before I answer, I'll take a lead. Go ahead, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it seems like a popular, a frequent refrain uh, from me, um, requesting equitable community input. And again, this is this is a major thing. I think many of us will be in support of it, but without the outreach to the community before today's meeting, I don't see how we can really do this appropriately, even if it's just bullet points. I understand that we have a, a jam-packed uh, meeting set for, for next month, and, and I understand that time is of the essence, but without having this information out to the community in advance, I, I don't feel comfortable putting, whether it's bullet points or a full res, uh, resolution for, uh, for today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Um, Paul, can I ask a question? Yeah, Michelle, go ahead. Um, just about like community engagement, and I take David's point about the the agenda item not maybe not being super clear, but like, isn't this the community engagement part? What we're doing here? Oh, I'm sorry, not community engagement necessarily, but at least like this is a space for people to discuss it. Paul, I'm asking you that. True, I, I, they know to attend. I mean, the point is not that many people knew to attend. We have a big representation of the electeds. I guess they got the same memo that the, the board got. But, you know, we've got transportation alternatives um, folks who attend regularly. We've got our regular crowd. I don't think that we have really that good representation. I actually agree with Lee on this. I'm just saying that this seems to be a thing that comes up over and over again, and like I don't want it to ever happen again. How do we, if this is not the place where we do the like where we do the feedback, then where is it, and how do we improve that? I guess going forward, because like, well, it is the I, feedback point. I agree, but I think that if we put a more comprehensive agenda item with bullet points about, you know, the impacts that are, people are likely to want to discuss, then we can have a fuller airing of those things. This is, you're right. This is the place to do it. I, so that's why I want to be clear about like this is what we do in the community board so I don't want it to be like that we are not the place for that that's why DOT is coming to us so I don't know who it's on to make it better but like that's what we're doing here you know so that's well, my point so I'll, I'll say this uh, Paul <laughs> I'm sorry that was me it, okay go ahead Lee. Michelle I, I understand and I agree this this is one of the components but I don't know that we have people from Avenue D here. I don't know if we have representation, representation from Avenue C here or, or enough people from Avenue A. And I know we certainly don't have enough representation from, uh, from, Jackson, from the Jackson Street area today. And I think it's because, as, as David mentioned, the agenda item wasn't specific Jesus. enough. And I think if it, if it was, then we would have more representation. And, and that's my concern. No, I understand that, Lee. Okay. Um, just take a few more comments before I say anything. Um, I see Ellen, and then I see a 646 number. Who is the 646 number? Um, 
Hi, Paul. It's me. It's Clint Smeltzer. I just had a comment about their proposal. Oh, okay. you weren't able to raise your hand before? No, okay. I, I'm the 646 number. Okay. I just, I'm not able to be in front of a computer right now, so I had to dial in. So I'm the 646 number you asked about. All right. I'll come back to you, Clint. Um, Thank you. Ellen, Ellen, uh, Ellen, go ahead. I'm just wondering whether or not the PPT that was just shown to us, is that for public consumption? Can that be put on the website or, and distributed? Or is there another presentation or another um, form of providing the, the same information or more information? We put all of our presentations online typically the following day. And then we typically circulate an email with the link. Okay, David. I'll try to be brief um, about whether the forum is the community board or elsewhere. I don't think we are, in fact, I am not asking that DOT do a roadshow and bring it to various stakeholder organizations for this. And when we've asked for that kind of thing in the past, I think pushback, you know, it's like, what's the balance? Because it is true. The community discussion and community input should crystallize here at the board. Um, I don't know if that helps. I, I think it's a different situation. Okay. Um, Clint, you can take yourself off me. I'll take your comment before I address everything. Okay. Okay. Um, I just had one quick question or comment. I know they said, I think they said that they weren't going to be making any changes to the 14th Street corridor, but you know, if they are concerned about speed, and this is something that I take the 14D on a regular basis, and the 14D that stops at Avenue A, Avenue B, I don't, I mean, if they're going to make some changes, maybe they would want to consider eliminating one of those because they're not major stops that a lot of people get off on. If you're coming from the south, they're not usually getting off on B or A. First Avenue is a big stop, of course, and going forward, but that just, I just wanted to add one small suggestion if they're looking at any other changes. Thank you, Clint. All right. Um, okay, so I, I'm not going to move forward with any bullet points or anything like that tonight. Uh, I'll just go with that. Well, I'll, it's contingent upon me, Michelle, the, the question you asked earlier. It's contingent upon me to put a better explanation of the agenda item as well um, and asking questions about it and getting a little bit more specifics to change it up and make it a little bit more knowledgeable for once we put the agendas up at the beginning of the month. So that's contingent upon me to ask more leading questions so I can get a better agenda item on there. So that's on me. Um, so I'll take the hit. Uh, that being said, uh, we'll memorialize everything. Uh, I'll take any final questions from the committee. If not, then we will move on from this agenda item. Ellen, go ahead. Final question. I was just wondering if the resolution or a possible future resolution, um, is it time sensitive? Is this something that we need to get um, into the hands um, of whoever within X number of months or weeks? Can, can, can I follow up with that? So what she's saying plus, um, is this plan gonna go through with or without our resolution. Right, um, there's also that. I mean, yes, Kimberly has said that it would be nice to get support, but if it's gonna go through without it and there's no obvious objection, I guess, but also I think, you know, the community in general needs time, right? And I think they need time to review this information and allow it to percolate because, it, I mean, I'm assuming that this will have far-ranging impacts um, that we can't imagine. So just to be responsible stewards, I think it's important to allow people to, to contemplate um, this proposal um, and not have to decide within the next you know, eight hours, let's say, right, on something yes. like this. DLT want to answer? 
Sure, I can reiterate that we would really like to have support and not only support, but feedback. So things that we hear tonight that we can incorporate, that we can work to address. Um, that's the kind of, you know, we want, we want to have that as, and whatever comes in the resolution as part of, as far as recommendations or adjustments, um, that is important to us. I know that this project um, was part of the, the mayor's announcement last month for um, projects that were going to happen this year. So I will say that our plan is to put it in the ground this year, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't want to make adjustments or changes based on, on feedback. So I think in addition to support, it's kind of getting that um, buy-in and more collaboration between the community and us. And so I, I think from our standpoint, I'm curious to hear like what kind of how we can help move forward and, and help you feel better about the outreach. So does that mean, um, you know, doing something between now and next month, um, you know, providing an update next month or what are, what are the steps that would be helpful for you? I think at the minimum, an update next month, at the minimum um, would be helpful because if you make any changes to this plan, let's say you take away the bus lane on Jackson Street or something like that, that would be helpful for us to know and helpful for the community to know, something like that. So at minimum, an update. Um, does anybody else have their hand up? No? Okay. So that being said, thank you. Uh, we're not going to do any kind of resolutions or bullet points on this tonight. Uh, but thank you for coming on and appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. So that's moving us to the next agenda item. We had a bus application um, last month that we put off because they incorrectly put the wrong information to the community on that application. So they are back. Um, who, who is here? Is it Mr. Liang? Mr. Liang? Liang. Yeah, yes, that's me. Okay, so um, all right. So talk to us a little bit about this uh, bus stop application that you've uh, sent to the committee, to the board. Okay, okay. My name is Hai Dong Liang. And uh, I'm I'm representing XR Happy Tour for the bus uh, bus stop application. Um, the bus stop is located at 24 Ori Street, Manhattan. Um, the purpose of this bus stop application is to provide transportation between uh, Manhattan to Mohegansan, which is located in the Connecticut. And we are running the bus daily, seven days a week. The departure time will be 8 a.m. from the bus stop and return to the stop around 7 p.m. And the passenger can purchase the ticket from our office and reserve by the phone. Um, there's already a bus company in the same stop doing the same transportation, but their contract with the with the Bohegan Sun is expired and they no longer doing the transportation. And we are the replacement bus company and we will continue to do the transportation between the Manhattan to Mohican Sun. And uh, this is. I'm sorry, my mute button was stuck. Um, thank you. So um, I'm going to take questions from the committee. The link was in the email I sent yesterday with the application. Um, I'll take questions from the committee first before I ask any questions um, on this application. Um, so so this, any questions from the committee so far in regards to this application? Ellen, go ahead. So the proposed location can get a bit crowded, especially that block. Um, so I was wondering just a question about crowd control or people waiting, like how will that be handled or dropping off and people, you know, are just standing around and, and whatnot? Um, it's not too much crowd that we the bus will be there around 8 a.m. in the morning and then when the passenger passenger arrive they will get in the bus immediately and we it's only take about 10 minutes go ahead David. yeah so this is this is essentially this is a casino bus is that correct Yes, correct. 
I believe that Community Board 3 has never approved a community bus that we were aware that that's what it was. And in around 2007, it's been a while, uh, we had a big effort to revoke licenses of buses that were just casino buses. There is no public benefit of a casino bus. That was it, David. Okay. Um, that's a good thing. I didn't know that. Uh, that never approved the casino bus. Lee Berman, go ahead. And then I guess this is a question for both David and, and Susan. Was the previous operator who, who um, our current operator mentioned was providing service to uh, Mohegan Sun, were they either approved, were they operating legally? Um, for this new vendor to try to take over uh, uh, utilization of that area. Um, did they either receive, did, did the previous operator receive anything from, any approval from CB3 or the city? They, they get their approval from DOT. With, without um, approval or, or, uh, from the community board? Absolutely. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you, David. Lee, in the application, it looks like DOT knew about the previous operator because it was in the first page of the application. Right. Um, so they must have approved it at some point. Yeah. So I, 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 then I guess really, David, if, if you can expand upon that, um, it's never been our position to approve casino operators or casino transportation because of a lack of public benefit, but DOT um, does issue whatever permits they need to. There's no, as far as I know, there's no public benefit uh, requirement in the DOT process at all. Um, and DOT is, you know, they, they don't, they're really looking strictly at the technical aspects of the location generally. I did find a resolution that we did in September, 2013, September, 2013. And we wrote, whereas the applicant operates a casino bus which the community feels does not provide a public benefit and in fact negatively impacts the quality of life for local businesses and residents in the area. And then at the end, therefore, you know, we, we recommend that DOT should not issue a permit for company to operate their bus service at a designated curbside bus stop at 30 Pike Street. Um, I would recommend that we basically pass that as the resolution. However, let's continue talking about uh, problems potential problems at this location, because we ought to address that as well. Remember, it is likely that DOT is going to issue this permit if it got this far in the process. This does mean DOT vetted the location already. Done. All right, uh, I'll take Susan and then Ellen. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, so um, I think there may have been two or three times that we stopped, you know, that there was a real reason where um, we got DOT to not issue a permit. And there was one time when um, they revoked a permit because the actor was, um, operator was so bad and the operator sued and got the permit back. So DOT is also kind of limited um, in that. And, but, if we don't have a very specific reason. I will say, I don't know why, but I would say for the past two or three years, we've stopped receiving complaints about buses. So I'm going to have to assume that the problem they caused in the neighborhood is not, you know, I, it's hard to say because COVID changed a lot and, you know, stopped a lot of bus activity, but even before COVID, we weren't getting the uh, many complaints that we used to get. Could be that people just stopped complaining. I don't know. All right. Thank you, Susan. Ellen and then Wendy. Ellen. So I just want to note that um, I think you further go, go down further, um, Bowie towards Chatham Square. There is actually another bus stop for a lot of casino buses, and that's actually been a regular casino bus pick up for quite some years. And I walk by there because I live right there um, all the time, day and night. And I can tell you that there's a lot of loitering and 
I mean, I, I can't confirm any other suspicious activities, but it's people do wait. It's not like people don't wait. Um, and there's actually a lot of waiting because that's really for some segment of the population, it's, it's really what they do on, on a regular basis. It, it was wait for these casino buses, right? Um, and so I just wanna note that, um, and I don't know how many casino buses there will be after this pandemic or that is happening now, um, but it, it seems to be, I mean, they're back now. So um, I'm just noting that. All right, thank you, Ella. Wendy, go ahead. Uh, I just also want to comment that like that particular section of Broadway tends to have a lot of um, homeless people just kind of like, like, I guess, camping the area. And my concern would be like, how they be able to keep their passengers like, and like safe despite all this in the area. You're talking about Broadway or Bowery? On Bowery. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah, I, on, yeah. Oh, did I say Broadway? Yeah, no, Broadway. on like that section of like Bowery because I live near there, I see like a lot of people just kind of like camping out in that area. There's like little like shacks for people to like sleep in. All right, so um, Mr. Liang, um, if you can answer that, like how do you plan on making sure things are safe and accommodating those passengers? Yeah, yeah. Um, we make um we we make sure we don't sell the ticket on the street, and uh, everyone they um they can make the put the ticket by the phone, so we don't end up like uh, everybody stay on the street. You know, we try to the best to control the um the uh yeah. Would you have a patron there or somebody there, kind of like just? Organizing the line out or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, we, we do have a uh, we have, we have a tour guide to organize the line and stuff. Yeah, every bus have a a, a, a tour guide inside. There. Okay, go ahead, Susan. I see your hand. Um, yeah, on the stipulations where it asks, do you have an office? They put one in Flushing, so that really doesn't impact us. So I, you know, I think we should just, you know, the answer is no. There is not an office. Okay. So. So basically, you're only, yeah. From what I saw in the application, you 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 put storefront in Flushing, so that's yeah. where your tickets are being sold is in Flushing, correct? Yes, and also we also sell ticket um by reservation from the phone. Right, so you can buy the ticket on online basically, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's only yeah. that's really the only way you can get it outside of going to the Flushing office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Committee, have any other questions? What do we have lined up for, okay, if it were an approval, we would have put, just help myself think about it, because I'm very rusty, we haven't had these in a while. So, we have a bunch of steps, okay. So, I have the, I worked on something last night um, from a previous res resolution that when you were chair, you, you did, it was, uh, I want to say it was in 20, either, I think late 2019, or early 2020, I, uh, so I, let me see. I'm going to just email it to Wendy and Michelle, see if they could put it up. Give me a second. Um, but it's something that looks, it's, uh, it's, a, it's basically taken from the application and putting the steps in based on what they agreed to in the application. Right. right. It was a rather long list that we got a lot of praise from CDOT from in the old days around 2007. You know, I think that's about when this got launched. The, 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 licensing scheme. However, it's all pretty much common sense stuff. So I'm not sure what value there is to getting them attached. Obviously, I think it's kind of clear that if we if we say don't issue it, uh, the steps don't get attached. Um, I don't know if Susan wants to pipe up that maybe I'm saying something that's not quite accurate. We do know that the bus companies um, that they're going to get the thing and they kind of have to because the courts have kind of decided you have to issue it unless there's a, a real problem at the location. So I kind of feel we should go on record saying we don't want it because it doesn't provide a public benefit and it actually uh, is a has, has an impact on the community. No benefit, the opposite. But Susan, if you think that the stipulations that we get attached to the license are useful, let us know. Um, as from what I've observed, 
there, there are you know, reprimands that happen between DOT and the companies, but they got a little bit of leverage. And I think that would continue anyway. So when we do have stipulations and there are complaints that um, that they are not that complaints are uh, ones that they have signed stipulations on. DOT does um, give a lot of attention to that. Does talk to them. That I mean, they they do a lot of enforcement on the, with the stipulations. Like I say, if there are complaints, like say if it's a sidewalk management or something like that. Um, but people have to complain and say that there's this problem, and then we find their stipulations, then the stipulations are helping. If people aren't going to complain, which they're not right now, um, I'm, I'm hearing people say, you know, this happens at this area or that area, but absolutely zero complaints. So, you know, stipulations are going to make a difference one way or another. That is true. I also, at one point, I hoped that DOT was going to pick up these stipulations and make them part of every every license. Um, they haven't done that, but I kind of hope that DOT would go ahead and have these conversations with operators if you know if they've got you know if there's a situation where, where passengers are jockeying for position. We have found that a lot of these kinds of operators sort of slip from having scheduled service to actually just filling the buses and moving them. I don't that know if any city permitting. agency that incorporates stipulations into any kind of permit. Right, right. we negotiated to have language like stipulations to be attached to. Um, we, we modeled these on, or I did on SLA, where the method of operation is pretty ironclad and it can be used, although it takes a long time, but it can be used in a process to correct a bad situation. Um, Actually, they're very effective. The SLA stipulations are very sure. effective, but that sure. again, it's the, the state, um, the state SLA is just, each city just doesn't do that. The one, one time I think that the stipulations do make a huge difference is when um, they, encourage an applicant to have a storefront. Oh, and our whereas is do the, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah, we put in the whereas. We really okay. encourage you. Well, we ought to do that because we should. Okay, so this is something I worked on last night off of a previous resolution we've done. It's basically the stipulations that are in the, in the application um, and just, changed up. Um, I did read in the application, Mr. Liang, that the drop off would happen at 5 p.m. Is that no longer true? Um, it's no longer true. So uh, after 7 p.m., it depends on the traffic. So we should put 8 p.m.? Yeah, put 8 p.m. All right, Wendy, where is uh, the one drop off daily Monday through Sunday? It needs to be changed. So okay. 8 p.m. David, did you still want to put something in about public benefit or not? I, well, if we put it, we're basically, we would be recommending to deny. I mean, that'd be the only reason to put such a thing. So do you want to maybe get a sense of the committee? I yeah, know. that's what I was thinking. So I'll just go around everybody. Uh, who's on? Michelle, what are your thoughts? Public benefit, no public benefit? Well, Move forward or deny? I, I mean, I, I guess I don't have a lot of clarity on, is it like a policy of ours that we don't approve of casino buses, David? Can you just explain that a little more? No, it's a precedence thing. We, the, the stop that, um, that, that uh, Ellen talked about in Chatham Square is what triggered it because mm -hmm. it was suddenly clear that there were uh, mm -hmm. a, a swarm of buses that were providing nothing but casino service. Yeah. And there, that particular 
spot was overcrowded with buses and it was a problem location. And there was an uprising. You know, I was just like, this is bad. Why are we even doing it? And we just started a, we, had, we set a precedent and we have kept to it of not approving them when we knew about it. That's all. Uh, my, my, Mr. Leon, uh, before I continue to ask the committee, um, SOE, did it commute to Mohegan Sun as well, or did it go somewhere else? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Yeah, the, uh, the previous uh, operator, SOE, did it go to Mohegan Sun as well, or did it go somewhere else? Yeah, they go, go to the same location. They went to Mohegan Sun, okay. And yeah, and they're, they're, no, lo uh, yeah, and they're no longer in business, okay. Yeah, yeah, because of COVID, yeah. Okay. So I guess, and then, sorry, I have some more yeah. questions. Susan, did you have any complaints from that specific location? No, that's the one outside Confucius Plaza, right? Kind of, yeah, it's across the street. Yeah, it's, it's um, well, the M103 never comes. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's pretty much an, em an empty spot and there and there is space there. I mean, because there's just kind of nothing there. I think the police used to park their cars there. Um, it, it's not a... It's not a problem space. It's also a once a day thing. Yeah, I'm not like, I'm not, I don't think I'm really against this, honestly. I mean, I, I, uh, yeah, it's like a bit, I mean, Bowery is a busy street already. It's not like something super narrow or whatever. Although I will say that I originally got involved in the community board because I was really against all the buses because they were destroying the area around Canal and Allen, but that's just, this doesn't seem that the same thing. I guess the concern would be if they're going to start doing more pickups and drop-offs. I feel like that did that come up last month. In the application, it says they might. I guess when this right when we really come come back to normal, they would want to apply for more departures yeah. and drop-offs, but not on this application. Right. Um, so, but we would get the chance to, you know, recommend that or not. Right. Yes, that's correct. So yeah, I mean, if there's if if like you, if we think that the DOT is going to approve it anyway, it's already an approved stop. There's no one there right now, though. Like it sounds like probably DOT will, will say yes to it, right? That's what they do. Like, is it better as David tried to discern? Like, would it be better to have the stipulations or not? Susan, do you, you want to say something? I, I was just going to say when you talk about public benefit, I mean, to the people that are using it, it's a benefit. It's their recreation. Yeah. Okay. No, okay, thank you. Um, so Michelle says she's in favor. Let me go down the list. Uh, David. Uh, I think I was clear. So you're not in favor. I am not in favor. I, I just want I just want to hear hear the words. I'm not okay. dead set against it, but I would vote for not I would vote for a denial. Okay. So that's one one versus that's one. Paul. Tariq is having trouble with the sound, but he's fine with it too. Okay, so Tariq is, so two to one. Um, Wendy. I'm for it. It's three to one. Ellen. I have reservations because in terms of um, providing a benefit for the community, like there's already a very uh, popular stop a block away. So I don't really understand this particular stop besides the fact that yes, there's basically an empty space. Um, that, in addition that, to that I, block on Bowery being always really busy with pedestrians and cars and there's a lot of double triple parking um, that occurs as well. Um, but I think, I mean, I would be fine if there were clear stipulations. Um, and, and I think if we were to include and address the um, public benefit issue, like to whom it would benefit, um, that would be clearer. Um, but I'm not staunchly against it. I just am more practical about it, I guess. So you're saying you're against it right now? You're on that, you're leaning towards that side. Um, it would be nice to have stipulations that are clear, even though it might not have any impact, but. Um, you want to propose language for a stipulation though? I can't read everything that's on okay. the page here. <laughs> um, can you see, yeah, those, are the, those bullets are pretty much the stipulations. So um, 
and this and they're taken from the from the application itself. So the application that the link that was sent is a, is the check boxes. Um, okay, so I'll come back. Uh, Lee Berman, sorry, I skipped you. That's all right. Um, I'd actually like to hear more from David first about his definition of a public benefit. Um, because I, I may be agreeing with that, depending on, on how he's defining public benefit. Um, and to show you how much I'm wavering, I was originally considering approving this because it already has a, an operator there. And if, if it was an addition to, that would be, that's different, but it's replacing. Um, so I'm on the fence and I, I'd really like, if, if David, if you don't mind, just explaining more of your, um, your your thoughts on what constitutes a public benefit and what doesn't. Thank you. Well, I recognize that these buses are a form of mass transportation and it's inexpensive. Um, I know it's a challenge for them to operate, but safety has been a challenge on these, the long distance buses. But it's a public benefit when they're, in my mind, when they are providing transportation from a city center to a city center then it's part of the transportation network. When it's going to a casino, I mean, it's not an essential service in my mind. Um, I mean, I'm not a staunch anti-gambling sort. I, I've enjoyed myself in casinos in the past, but not, um, yeah, it's just, it doesn't, it, to me, it's not a part of the transportation network. That is a public benefit, or sorry, that, that is the public benefit of some of these buses and I don't see it in a casino bus. Okay, um, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, then, then Paul, for your answer, I think right now I'm leaning towards approving it only because it's replacing um, something that already existed. All right. And we were said, we got Tariq already. Am I missing anybody else? I think I got everybody except for me. Yeah, I'm leaning towards approving. Um, so let's add a whereas where we talk about the lack of a storefront, um, which I'll dig up for us if we, if we want. I think that does improve these things. Whereas we encourage the applicant to continue looking, maybe the applicant could talk about his search so far. Are, are you trying to um, find a storefront uh, to potentially Sell tickets in, in within like a shared that area. area. Shared or within the area. Happen. A shared one, perhaps. I don't hear anything. Um, Susan, go ahead. I see yeah, you. I don't know. This is, you know, this is Chatham Towers. So I don't know that there is any possibility. You have from the bridge, you know, there's, you have from the bridge. All the way down through Chatham, you know Chatham Towers. So I don't see that it's. I don't know where it'd be possible. Uh, what about the members who live near? Because I'm not, I'm not that familiar with the area. When I go through, I'm, I guess I'm in tourist mode. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I I am. It's a you know, you you know the the bridge. You know that area from the bridge. So they you have from the bus stop to the bridge is just that sidewalk. And then below to the south to division, it's, Ch it's Chatham Towers, the Mitchellama, and their, their storefronts on the bottom, which I don't think they're gonna be running to casino buses. Um, so it, it's the co-op, it's a Mitchellama co-op. Right, what about like around the corner or something? I mean- Around the corner is the school. So you'd have to go across the street, either across Bowery or across division. Because when you go around the, you know, if you go south and then go around the corner, you have school where we've had, we've had meetings there. I'd say the important thing is not to sell tickets on the street. The, the right. issue with no storefront is no bathroom. And no waiting on the sidewalk. nobody waiting within any of the buildings yeah um, which i can tell you happens a lot 
well, if no one else is going to speak up for adding awareness like this, you know, I'm not going to. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of convinced that it's not going to be possible. I ask a quick question. Um, so you never just mentioned that there are people typically waiting in, in buildings. Are, do you think those are people waiting for the casino buses that are doing that in, in, in you know, uh, residential buildings or trespassing to, to wait for those casino buses? Not in Chatham, not in Confucius Plaza. I'm sorry, it's Confucius. Did I say Chatham Towers before? It's Confucius Plaza that's there. I don't think I've noticed anybody like like loitering inside residential areas either. It's yeah. mostly like on the streets. Um, but I don't think I've never noticed like them being inside where they're not supposed to be. Yeah, not not here. In other mm -hmm. streets they do, but not here. Yeah, yeah, not here. It's it's just not play, there's nothing right there. Oh, the, heat, the heat's getting to me. Um, the, we still wanted to put a stipulation in about the public benefit. How does everyone feel about the that? Stipulation is what, what they're right. going to it's do. To agree, right. It, it's, a, it's a specific action. Yeah, or whereas, no. Paul, I don't. I don't think we should put anything about that unless we are going to deny. And so sure we're enough. not going to deny, yeah. We should definitely have a drafted one like that at some point, just to, have, to be ready in case we do want to deny a bus company. I, I did find a whereas if we want to say, keep looking for a storefront, if, if I don't think anybody else has said it to me, I will read you the one sentence whereas we have used in the past. Whereas the applicant company has agreed to postpone, oh, this is where they've agreed to postpone their due to the application until they can locate a storefront closer to the proposed bus stop at. Never mind. Well, you can put in a line saying we encourage them to continue looking. Should we put that in the resolve clause or as a whereas? It would be in a separate whereas. Okay. And it would be only if someone else speaks for it other than me. I need a second, but I don't- I'm for it, I'm for it. Let's put it in. Okay, where should I put the- After um, the um, right bus, after that one, after the, before the whereas of the stipulation, so. This one, okay. Yeah. The applicant will endeavor to have a storefront. Hmm. What was it, David? Where's the applicant? Well, we should ask them to continue looking and we might want to state something about you know, you... why we find there's a benefit to that. I'm so sorry that I didn't you know, engage on this earlier for you all. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a possible storefront near the proposed bus stop? Yes. Yeah, which would provide a um, Storefront, yeah, near here the proposed right, mm -hmm. and there's a period. Um, mm -hmm. The storefront would provide an area for passengers to wait for their ride and use restroom facilities. CB three has found that um, this helpful to. To be helpful. Yeah, helpful to, we need a phrase here if, if we want to, mm. so you know what, we don't need to go this far. I, think, I don't think, do, do we want to put something like that in? I, I think we're fine with we'll ending at restroom facilities. Correct, oh. I think so too. Yeah, let's, we're good there. Without mm. these things, you have more impacts on the community. You could say, you know, mm. th those services will reduce, would reduce the impact on the community. After, right there, I, those services would reduce the impact on the community. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other um, changes you want to make? 
should there be an end here and here? Yeah, we usually do that. We yeah, usually... I probably didn't do a good copy and paste job. So go ahead and put the hands in. Thank you. I think it's good. I think uh, can, go, can, you, can you just scroll down to the resolve box? Mm -hmm. Bus server set a designated curbside. Put instead of A, put the designated cur curbside. And it's B, designated curbside. Okay. Providing that the preceding list of stipulations agreed between them can be attached to the DOT part. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I, I will say I'm surprised that there's nobody to the, from the community to speak for or against. And that probably is a good sign about this stop. So I'm comfortable passing this. I'm not going to vote no. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to use our closeout vote for this resolution. We still have the district needs. No, no, no. I, I, I'm just going to hold off on should we you want to just vote right now? Oh, or no. do we want to vote on this resolution right now? Or do we want to wait until nice. I nice move to the table this until after. Oh, nice for the applicant. I don't move that. Okay, that's fine. Let's all right. Let's take a vote now. Uh, Wendy, if you can just run through. Um, okay, Paul. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Lee. Lee, we didn't hear you. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. David. Yes. Alicia? She, she's no longer part of the oh. committee. The oh, board. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you struck her out. Yes. And Tariq? Yes. Did it work? It yes. worked, Tariq. Loud and clear. It's the heat. All right. Uh, all right. Congratulations. Uh, it passes. Application passes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Liang. Um, there will be a full board vote on it. Full board is the 22nd? Yeah. Okay. June, uh, June 22nd is the full board vote. Um, the committee passes it and then it will go to full board on June 22nd. Okay. Thank you, everyone. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, next thing we have is district needs was it fy 23 susan you correct i think you're nodding your head yes no. all right um fy 23 um i'm sorry i didn't realize i muted myself again <laughs> it's fy 23 correct yes that we're working on correct. okay all right um i did send the updated version of the district needs um with the uh, what's that what's that person's name again, Susan? I, I forget. Um, who Pardon? Worked on oh, who worked on who worked Kayla. on the stats. Kayla. Kayla. There we go. All right. So, Wendy, if you could pull up the district needs, that'd be great. That I sent out yesterday or last night, whenever I, did. I think I did it yesterday. Just pulling that up. Ah, thank you. All right. So there is a little key attached to, the, to these uh, stats. The yellows are updated. Um, I believe anything in red is struck out. There's, there's some stuff that's struck out of right. the uh, district needs now. Um, there's some potential to update qualitative data and then there's the updated data. I don't know how many of you have gotten a chance to really look at this. Um, uh, I don't know how many or how much, well, well, or that's bad phrasing. Uh, what kind of changes do we really need to make to this? This looks relatively 
good from what I read over the weekend. Um, I think the only part I may want to change, if we can just scroll all the way down before we come back up, um, just want to go to public safety. Section. All the way to the end? Um, yeah, all the way. Yeah, public safety is ending. Right here. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only thing I really want to delete from here um, is the COVID-19 portion because I don't know what kind of effect that will have on FY23 and anything like that. I just, I'm, I wasn't, you know, I read this a couple of times last night. I wasn't sure how to attack this section. Um, I know I kind of helped write it last year. Um, I don't know if there's anything we want to change from this section. Uh, Susan, I, I, I did tell you that. Yeah, go ahead. You have your hand up. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I just wanted to, uh, what you said just reminded me that, to remind people that this district need is for a year from this coming July. So mm -hmm. this is a statement for July 2022. So what you're saying about COVID is is very true. You know, it's not going to about how relevant it would be at that point. So 2022 or 2023? I'm 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 confusing it's myself. Fiscal year 23, which starts at July 1st, 2022. Jesus, it's a lot of numbers. This is yeah. this is argumentation for the city budget that is going. We launched the city budget process with this document effectively. So. It goes through city council and gets debated really next year, calendar year. And so we're talking about the situation that we anticipate, yeah, in July, one year out. It's for the budget that will start then. It's the thing is, this ought to be long-term needs, right? It is to inform it. Um, and so we're, we should be talking about kind of long-term needs mm -hmm. generally. All right, let's scroll back up. We'll start from the top. Oh, so my, my point of saying that, Paul, was to particularly agree with what you were saying. <laughs> Thank you. And if I could just say one more thing, um, I did promise to get updated rodent information, and I have been promised it, but I don't have it yet. But when that comes, it'll be pretty much be able to be dropped in. Okay. We can't just write, we have a lot of rats. Well, you could do that too, but... <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, no, I'm sure those stats are coming soon. And, um, it's, it's just hard because they stopped all their counting and all their work over the whole COVID shutdown. Okay. So the accessibility and safety, uh, that 8.7 number has to be changed when the data is available, if it will ever be available. Well, uh, it looks like we're not going to have it for this. Okay. And considering what we discussed tonight um, with DOT and the MTA, improved accessibility of bus stops, which is necessary for seniors and people with disabilities. You know, we heard some people from the community talk about that accessibility of bus stops. I think this is something we shouldn't take out. I think we need to continually put this portion in um, and keep it in there. Um, um, I like that portion. I don't know if anybody's against that little bullet point. I think it's fine and it should stay in there. Um, I don't know if there's any, is there anything that's, uh, I'll just ask this, is there anything from the district needs statement that the committee desperately wants to put in or change or amend or wants to see put in? Paul, it's Ellen. Yeah, go um, ahead, Ellen. Go ahead. I just wanted to note, um, since you showed the last paragraph, I just want to touch upon, um, I don't know if there needs to be explicit, explicit mention of a specific population um, that is dealing with mental health issues, which who are either incarcerated right, or homeless. And I know that that's not necessarily probably this committee, but yeah. really this population is a, is a big percentage, right, of a lot of people who are now, you know, being arrested because they have these violent outbursts. And it's not because they need to be locked up or, you know, they do need housing, but they need mental health services, right? And so I don't know if that needs to be connected or noted when we're talking about homeless outreach. I, I think that's, that's human a, services. Human services, yeah. 
I believe that was that's being addressed. Uh, hum so David and I are on human services and we did district meets Thursday night. And I believe that's a big part of it. Um, that's a, they have a huge section, human services is about what, eight, nine, 10, 12 pages of district yeah. meets. So um, that's addressed within there. Uh, in fact, um, this past Thursday night, uh, the DA's office was there talking about alternative to incarceration and things with mental health and substance abuse um, and how they address it and how they treat it. Um, so it's it's something that can live technically in both committees, but um, a lot of that stuff does reside in human, human services and um, that's where it's at. But thank you. No, it, it's definitely in there. Um, it will be in the full district need statement of the board. Uh, oh, yeah. Are you ahead. proposing that we delete the section in blue then? What's highlighted here? I was I was playing tennis with it yesterday. I I I, um, I mean I I think we should. I I'm going to say I think we should. I, I I think so too because it was really based on when I put it together last year. It was really based on COVID nineteen and what was happening as a result of it. Um, okay. I think since we're going into fiscal year, this is for fiscal year 23, this looks different now. So I think um, I am okay with deleting it. Um, I don't know if anybody else is okay with deleting it. I'm fine with that. Though. And the sentence I'm not married before, to it. what is the sentence before a serious crime stat? What does that do for the overall document anymore? And now that I'm reading it, I, I kind of dislike the whole framing here, but what was the line? What is this under a heading or a? Yeah, it was paragraph? under public safety. It was under public safety. So we, we right. didn't have a public safety portion the year before. Crime and is right. going up. I mean, yeah. crime is definitely going up uh, a big yeah. increase. And maybe what we should add is a statistic after that one sentence about the, it would have to be citywide about the increase or possibly we could do it for our, actually for CB for our precincts, we could do, we could talk about the increase in crime in our precincts. Right, so I'm wondering if there's a stat where we could talk about a recent increase, because if I'm reading these, you know, the red, the red lining correctly, looks like a decrease in CD3, I'm a little surprised. In the series, it was 13.1 in 2020, but we're now going to 2021. I, I, yeah, I know, but we wouldn't have full stats for that yet. So is there a way that we could locate stats that indicate that there is an increase? Sure, because they give I, monthly, they give oh, monthly stats on the pre, for every precinct on, it's there online. So maybe that's what we added. Maybe we add in the precinct stats because- Yeah, maybe what, you could put a, a note there, you know, a comment to, um, to insert year-to-date precinct stats to document um, to document increase. All right, so insert you today precinct. Uh, so that'd be the nine, the seven, the five, uh, PSA four. All right, insert wise you today. Yeah, PSA four is so huge. I just, yeah. I, I don't know how to do it for PSA four. Yeah, I do like the pre. Yeah, you know what? You're right because it goes into the west side and goes across many districts. Um, yeah, we'll into, we'll put wise you today precinct stats to document the increase because there may be higher numbers in the ninth precinct and lower numbers in the fifth precinct, and that's what ends up with the number that no, we see no. right there. Fifth precinct just went. I got a. We had a district service today, and they just showed increase too. Oh, well, but seven and nine are most of seven and nine are the uh, biggest ones for us. And, you know, we could we could look add the fifth, but say, you know, it's only a part of it since CB3. OK, all right. So really, the seven and the nine are the top two. Yeah. OK, so we can put that's, that that's in. great. So if, if, if you stick in that after that, the first leading sentence about serious crime, basically drawing a picture of the increased crime rate. That would be good. Let's put a paragraph, a new paragraph there in front of there have been, a, in front of the blue stuff. Just break it as a separate paragraph. It's not untrue. 
Um, and it, it is a concern. You know, I, the open drug use, the uh, shooting up in my community garden is a serious problem for me. And uh, why, why are you I, taking don't, it? Oh, I, see. I don't want it to be uh, a policing issue, but it is a public safety issue. And so I kind of think that having this paragraph here kind of does capture. You talking about the blue paragraph? You want to keep the, the blue, blue paragraph? paragraph? Well, but there's no I, documentation for it. So for the reporting numbers for crime statistics, is there a breakdown in terms of what types yes. of crime? Yes. So yeah. is that something that we touch upon, such as, you know, for specific demographics, right? Increasing it doesn't give you demographics. It just talks about the crimes. Oh, so, so specific types of crimes. Yes. Yeah, they'll tell you like types of felonies that are being committed. Like there's Burglary, stats are higher larceny. up in grand larceny, murder, rape, anything of that sort of the higher levels, they will report that number out. And are those breakdowns pertinent in terms of what categories they belong under? Yes, they give the breakdown for every category every month. So my question is do we need to list those and are those specific categories important topics for us to talk about or not? We couldn't, we couldn't list them all, but we could take the major ones and say the increase year to date or something like that. I, if we're, I, I, you know, in crime stats, I don't like to really pick and choose, but if there's a way to pick and choose, I think what's affected the community the most over the past year are two things, violent felonies and hate crimes, right? So- Well, yeah, um, I don't, they don't, they ahead. have what they call the three major ones. Right. Well, maybe that's what we put in the three majors. Yeah. I I'm, don't know that they give the stats for every month for, for hate crimes, but we probably could get the hate crime statistics. Well, uh, as close to a recent hate crime stat, because I know it's actually a high threshold to pass on a yeah. hate crime. Um, so they generally do not like to charge hate crimes. It's because of it is a, a, a tough threshold to hit for some strange, odd reason. Um, but I, I think we can put it in. I think. It, okay, Wendy, could you put where you have that note for the increase? Put three major, three major crimes plus hate crimes. Isn't there a hate crime task force or something? Yes. Do yes. they yes. report on statistics? Yes, that's what we said. We'll we'll try and get it. Do we still want that blue paragraph? In? I, what do other people think? <sighs> I mean. The, the open air uh, shooting up is undeniable. Is it public safety? I don't know, I have a particular horror of that. So, I don't, you know, the, the guy in the community garden, I mean, we had a confrontation with him just yesterday. I tried to focus on not leaving his uh, paraphernalia behind, uh, but it didn't go well and he revealed that he knows my name and phone number. Woo. yikes. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's posted on the gate of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> but I okay. didn't tell, you know, whatever. He know, he's known me for many, many years. I've known him. He used to use the garden irregularly, and uh, he's back. Well, he's been, he was on the block using the sidewalk shacks for a while. He's Could you just take, guide. take out the references maybe to COVID-19 since it's going to be a year from now? I think everything else is still true. Mm. Yeah, just take out anything that says COVID-19. Can we change it to just like a paraphrase it and have it be towards a addressing a quality of life set of issues? It's not a quality. Quality of life is, an, is, is sort of the opposite of crime. Right, but a lot of these smaller issues are quality of life, right? Like homelessness and then people no. doing things that 
might and not be arrestable or chargeable. And there seems to be a lot more of those things. Homelessness uh, is, in hum is, is dealt with ext sort of extensively in the um, human services. And these other things are not quality of life. Yeah, so one thing in the in the heart of this that might look be useful is the need for there's a there is a need for stronger and more streamlined communication. I mean, this is a perennial issue, and uh, reads like well, reads like something that I've heard said often. It's the next to the last sentence in it. Does that Susan? Is there something you can work it's with? It's still on that? true. That's still true. I think. I mean, you basically could t leave everything there except, you know, except the current COVID-19. Everything else is still true. So the yeah. sentence is starting with however the current makes it. How there, have been a, there have been a significant, you could still say there have been a significant increase in the number of complaints to the community board for open drug use and other crime. That's absolutely true. Um, I would take out the sentence about COVID. Um, Just take out the whole sentence? That whole sentence yeah. is highlighted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Gone. Um, I think it is true working with NYPD and homeless outreach. Um, that's absolutely true. People, um, in, well, I don't know. I think I might want to take out that the crimes are uh, including people experiencing homelessness. I think the people who are homeless who are committing crimes are those that are also have substance abuse. And I think yes, I right. would take out the people experiencing homelessness. Including- Cut out experiencing homeless and others. Yes. Yeah, leave people and- Oh, okay. Type, yeah. yeah. I agree. Struggling with the recent forms and the release of it. Um, <laughs> Well, we could take out. Yeah, let's take that out because that won't be in effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would take, no, I would leave in the first part of it. Yeah. The recent reforms in the criminal justice system, absolutely, that's still true. Right, uh, right. That's what the DA was just talking about. Mm. But the take out the release of inmates, inmates from jails due to COVID-19. We don't know who the next DA is going to be, and um, it would be good in my opinion, if the, if the focus continued on things like this, uh, you know, beefing up this uh, alternatives to incarceration program. The recent uh, reforms exacerbated a need for more service. So, so I'm, I'm saying this is a good paragraph to have in here for this reason. I would take up beyond yeah. homeless outreach. So I'll just say there's a need for more services for this population in CD3 mm -hmm. period. between the partner questions. And I, I would actually, so the next sentence, there's a need for stronger, more streamlined communication between DOC, Department of Corrections and other services. Yes. That's it. That's yeah. it. We, don't, we don't write Department of Homeless right. Services, it's just and other services. Uh, As, and other and services to, to secure period. the needs. To secure the needs of this population as they- of, um, uh, could say the needs of formerly incarcerated uh, yeah. people as they reintegrate into CD3? Yeah. So there's a need for stronger and more streamlined communication between Department of Corrections and other services. Oh, no, no. And supportive housing. Yeah, no, that's still true. Mm. No, we're going to put, go keep homeless services or in there? Or no. no. No, so get, get rid of homeless services. It, well, it's a such as. No, Susan, I mean, this is not a blaming the home. The fact is, you're at risk of homelessness if you are uh, formerly heart incarcerated. I mean, it's, or is that not what this is about? I lost. I'm going to stop now. I'm getting I, tired. I, I, I think I just want to put Department of Corrections and any other um, stakeholder, a city agency that. Yeah, I think that's the way the way you have it. Delete the purple, like you have it. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a grammatical problem here then. Between DOC and other city agencies? Yeah. So as well as should be and maybe? Yeah. Mm. No, to secure the needs of formerly incarcerated people as they reintegrate into CD3, correct? There's also a need for halfway services and supportive housing 
for those leaving incarceration. Uh, well, it's true, but I would like to hear. Oh, it is true. Okay, I was. I'd like to hear yes. more about what what is missing. De, de Blasio oh, is saying. De Blasio is saying the city does it, but the state doesn't. But it's really nobody does it. He's trying to blame it all on the state. Mm, I remember if there's a if there's a section about this in the human services or not. I don't think there is, Paul. I don't think so. It's a good I'm, I'm, I'm trying to recall back from Thursday night. I don't remember. I mean, we can keep it in. It's fine. Um, all right, let's scroll back up. That's... Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So pedestrian traffic safety in the first four months of 2021. 303 total injuries due to pedestrian, bicycle, motorcycle. Density of injuries is, is in high in comparison to other community districts in Manhattan and the rest of the city. All right, the highest volume of crash incidents are located on. This stays the same. This this yeah, this didn't change. She checked Very that. Much, okay. All that Bowery, red is new stuff that she stuff, checked. Bowery, East House, and Delancey. Yeah, she and I talked about that. Okay. This is all updated. Oh, third half. Mm. That doesn't surprise me. All right. What is this purple? DOT Manhattan. It means that she, Oh, she's no new no data yet. Right. Um, so it's going to stay the same. Either take it, it out or stay the same. Okay, so it'll stay that same. Yeah. Because that's the most recent pedestrian safety action plan we have, right? Exactly. In a sense, this was a note to self because I wrote this. This was a note to self that, like, look, they highlighted that these were additional areas beyond the three or whatever that, that we had always focused on. Originally, this highest volume of crash incident list came from really old data that I believe transportation alternatives had posted that showed, you know, counted number of fatal incidents and so forth over a, like a decade long interval. So do we want to collapse it all together or, or not? The highest were at those locations, and we are aware of other ones, and we know that DOT was interested in addressing those ones, right? So it's almost like a note to self, note to committee. We might want to take these up. Does it belong in the district needs? You mean the second, the second batch? Is that what you're saying? You're right. The stuff starting in purple. Like everything. I, I have no feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating else, either way. I think generally less is more because you focus on what's there. In taking it out, are we saying that these intersections are no longer an issue? No, of course not. That's not what that's saying. So it's what saying did you it, take it out? It's just, it's words. Do we think it's important to have it here as a, as a need? It was already on the DOT radar. Yeah, what does it um, add? In other words, we're, it's, it's right. no longer pointing to a, a priority need. And, in the, and it hasn't been updated. Well, there was well there's no, there's no there's nothing update. update. Yeah. And we got our update on the first set of bullets. Right. Yeah, I don't need it in there. What does everybody else think? Is there a dying need to keep this portion in there? If not, let's just take it out. Let's take it out. Let's take out all of it. Yep. Okay. Industrial safety improvements and traffic calming measures are needed on these key corridors and high priority incident. Okay, this is fine. So the large scale was taken out, right? Yeah, so we already took that out. Yeah. Okay. That was just to show it was taken out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's go down to delivery and cart curbside management. Can I suggest we turn on uh, track changes? Yeah, you're right. Or do we, we not want to do that? I mean, that. I just oh, thought mistake. of that. I mean, at least for this last one, perhaps undo and then turn it on and put it back. I don't know. Undo and then we do that. It shows up in a track. Yeah. That would be great because mm -hmm. it'll be very helpful to Kayla to do that. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, why don't you just strike it out? Don't even delete it. Just strike it out. Well, if you delete it, we'll that is what it out with track yeah. images. Sorry. Um, we just make sure the track changes. It's yeah, that's it. okay. Cool. Okay. But you still need to delete it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There we go. Ah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So delivery the demand for deliveries driven by online shopping the proliferation of delivery was the need for delivery on loading zones by losing the same I guess we keep we can keep that in there. It's fine. Still a need until they put that whole plan in place, right? So that number went up 93, it's now 93% of workers are in the district right. do not use a car to commute. Right. Is 93 or 91, it's currently 91. It's updated already, it's been updated. Uh, it's updated already. It's already. So don't touch that. Yeah, don't touch that, it's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Many residents are poorly served. The subway system with 15%, living more than a half mile away from the nearest subway stop, that's correct. So we're still waiting on the road and stuff. Yeah. DOH is doing that for us. Okay, let's scroll down. Mm -hmm. So this is still the same because there's no updated data, right? Right. You scroll down a little bit and we'll see that red, right there. District, so that's something new that we didn't put in before the trees representing 72 tree species. Did Kayla put that in or did we? That looks completely new. I guess she put it in. I don't know that I would have put it in. Do you really want it there? I, I don't remember tree species being in there last time. No, There's, it's, nor docu the, nor it's, the documented. It, it's documented, but I don't know that it adds much. I don't either. I'm happy if you want to take it out. I mean, we want more. The, the thing is the 21%, uh, yeah. Kind of the, the high point here is the very last sentence. I may get lost. I wrote this last year. So you want to delete there, that sentence? I think that so, insert? yeah. Currently, the insert, yeah. This one? Yeah. We do have, maybe not the bullet point. The, the thing at the end is my original footnote. So if that deletes the footnote, you need to undelete it. And noise is coming up. Noise. Radio. There you go. But noise is the number one complaint at CJ3 and is increasing in frequency from March 2020 to March 2021. There. Ooh. Is that 27,462? What's that? From 14,000? Holy moly. Hey, open they're, they're open streets. Open streets. What do you think I spend my time doing all day is dealing with those 27,000 complaints? Open, I don't think the programs, never mind. So that's, that's more than that. I've Hope. been calling in these exact kinds of complaints and I've never done it before until this past year. So you're 25,000 of the 27? <laughs> Probably three. <laughs> Holy crap, yeah. Wow, all right. That's it. And we're just waiting on the rodents thing. So we'll finalize this next month. Um, like yeah. we, we'll vote on it next month. If Kayla is using this, what? Can we do you, if Kayla's using this, we made changes in at least in public safety without benefit of track changes. Do we want to stick a note here? Oh, I so can that Kayla add knows him back in. that there were yeah, changes. Would you do oh, that? that's so hard. Can, yeah, I can add him back. So yeah, I can add him back in later on after the meeting. Yeah, so I was going to ask, could you, would you be able to send this back to me separately? You don't have to wait for the minutes mm -hmm. yeah, to send, send this one back. And sure. if you could add in that, the, uh, to show the track changes, the changes in that would be paragraph. perfect. I, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't think of that in the beginning. No worries. Were there a change or two at the top before I thought of it? No, no changes up though. I don't think all so. yeah. Great. So we're not gonna actually vote till October just in case we'll finalize it next month. 
but then vote on it with the budget stuff in October. So if there is some late statistic or something, you can throw it in. Okay. Or update it. All right. I'm, I'm comfortable with this. This is fine. All right. Okay, sorry. Oh, wow, that's bad. Um, it's the heat. Uh, all right, it's A51. Um, I think it's the last thing, right? Mm -hmm. I have anything else on here? Okay. So we're getting the text amendment back next month. Uh, and we so, will have it. I have in writing from the city planning borough, uh, borough director that we will definitely have two months to deal with it. Okay. So they're presenting next, next month. Yeah, just for everyone's <clears throat> benefit. What they did is they didn't certify it when they were supposed to, and it was going to leave us with a one month turnaround. Um, but we got DCP to, to specifically give us more time. Copy, all right. Um, I did mention to DOT to possibly come back with the update with an updated for the bus plan or proposal. So hopefully they will. Um, well, but we can, we can, mean, yeah, we, can mean, we, I, I, we can talk about that offline, Susan. That's fine. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure they will. We'll just have to figure out do you want to prepare a resolution in advance? You know, what is it going to be? You know, right. basically they want feedback comments. The plan is going through, they want feedback comments. You know. Yeah. All right. Um, that being said, let's do our final closeout vote and for attendance, and then we can adjourn. Okay, Paul. Yeah. Uh, yes. Michelle. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Lee. Yes. David. Yes. Felicia, uh, no longer. No, no, she's uh, not on the board anymore. Mm -hmm. Ellen? Yes. And Tariq? Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are adjourned. Have a